All right, welcome back everyone to part uh, six, I believe, of our RPG tutorials. Um, in today's video, we are going to be finishing our AI. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually change the C player function. Um, the concept of C player is we're going to change it. So instead of C player, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it to state. So this might be something familiar um, that you might have seen before. Um, but basically, every time the something gets entered, we're going to be in a certain state. So if the state, so for example, we'll we'll finish, uh, we'll fix the detect player. So the detect player is to chase the player, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to change the state to chase. Oops, sorry, not false. Chase, right? And then. Sorry, that's if it enters. If it doesn't, then we're going to make it equal to idle, right? So basically what's happening is if the player enters this circle, it's going to create the state equal to chase. And if the state is equal to chase, then we're gonna chase the player and we're gonna run the run animation. And then we're gonna change this to elif state equals idle, then we do the idle animation, right? Um, we'll do this in a second, but this is the basic concept of it. And so now this should work. But now if I enter and leave, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make the uh, default idle, right? So. So now it's playing idle, and if I enter, it'll chase me. Awesome. All right, and now what we're going to do is in the attack range, instead of playing the attack animation, we're going to change the state to attack, and now what we can do is we can check if the state is equal to attack. And if it is, then obviously we play the attack animation. So we can delete this and we can leave that. We'll play it, play. We should chase. And then I believe that is the attack. Yeah. Awesome. So now we have a fully functioning, almost fully functioning AI. One thing I forgot to do is if the attack range is exited, what we're going to do is uh, change it back to idle. So we're going to copy this over. And yeah, there we go. So now if we play it, the AI will chase us and then it'll attack. Oh, sorry, no, we're going to actually make it back to chase because if it exits the attack range, we're going to chase it again until we can attack. Yeah, so that's my mistake. So now attack, run away, no attack, and keep going. All right, and what we can do is we can kind of edit this so that it's a little bigger. Also make this slightly bigger. All right, and now... Just chest one more time. Oh. Oh. It doesn't look now obviously. So here's one issue that you might already notice is the attack doesn't really look like it's attacking. So one thing we can do is we're going to add something called animation player. And so this is a good way to introduce animation player. In fact, Animation player might have been better to use beforehand instead of animated sprites for something like this. However, I wanted to introduce both, so we can still use both. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new animation, and it's going to be called attack. And what this is going to do is um, we're going to take the attack, the animated sprite, we're going to take the transform, over here. Ooh, can I do that actually? No, I can't. But what I can do 
instead is we're going to transform the actual kinetic body instead. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll click this little key, and that will, I'm going to deselect the create reset track. We don't really need it. And we're going to make that key here. So this basically makes, it marks that position on that animation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to also play attack. This might have a little issue. Um, I'll we'll get into it in a second, but that's the basic idea of it. Um, so now let's play it. Nothing's changed, but oh, ah, I see. Okay, so the position changed it completely. Okay, so what we can actually do here is we're going to um, go back to character. No, yeah, character. And we're going to add a new sprite. Here we go. And we're going to add the slime texture. And we're going to change the, the entire animation now. So animation, sorry, not offset. If we add a normal sprite, we add add it to the texture. We go to animation. We go to H frame, and we just start selecting how many horizontal frames we have, which is six, and I believe this is four. Right? We can actually look at it. One, two, three, four, five, five, and then one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven. All right. So now we go with that. All right. And what we're gonna actually just do is make this invisible. Take the sprite, and we're going to move it up just slightly. So I'm going to lock all this so I can't move it. OK. There we go. Now I can move the player. Now it's on top of it again. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new animation in each one of these. So idle. Um, Chase, uh, we'll do run. And then what was the other one? I think it was death, but we don't have to do that one yet. OK, and now what we'll do, this one's very simple. In our idle animation, we go to player uh, sprite. We have the animation selected down here. You can see my mouse on the bottom. And if we go to animation, we see the frame, right? Frame is 0. Click the key. Create, and then I'm going to zoom in slightly, go to 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, go up one frame, key, and then we're just going to keep clicking until there's no more keys. We're going to delete that, and we can kind of drag it all to fit, and then we'll change the time to 0 0.3 or 0 0.35. And now, I believe kind of test it by playing it and then we can also loop it here we go the loop is on the right right there ah, you can't see it because my camera is blocking it let me just move that I'll just make it invisible for a second if you can look on my mouse right there you can see the loop if you click it it'll loop the animation. So then if I click this again, it'll loop the idle animation. It's very quick. So what we can do is we're going to switch it to 1. I'm going to stop it for a second. We're going to move this to the end. And we're going to kind of spread it out a little bit. So now it runs a bit smoother. Awesome. Now we're going to do the same thing for our run, because run is our next one. So if we go to Sprite, Go to run, and we're going to find that frame, that first frame, which is going to be number seven. So we're going to create it, and go to O2, and go to frame eight, and then just start clicking until we reach the end. And I'm going to make each one 0.2 seconds away from each other. So this entire thing is going to be 
1.2. So now, same thing, I'm gonna loop it, and then I can play it. And you kind of see the player is running again. All right, and then I want you to pause the video and try to do the same thing for the attack animation. So this one, I think, will also be 1.2, and try to do the same thing. And so unpause, and I'll do the exact same thing. So um, sprite. We're going to find the attack animation, which is, yeah, okay, I just passed it. So six, wait, no. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 14 is gonna be the first animation. Yeah, that's right. So that's like how you count it. It's kind of hard, but that's how you would do it. 14, click the key. Oh, let me click it. There we go. Create. 15, go to 1, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I don't think 21. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, that's it. So up to 21. Okay. And now we're going to kind of spread it out a little bit. So that way it's not super fast. And now we can play this. We're not gonna loop this one because this is just one frame essentially. So now what we can do is um, we're going to, I'm gonna test this and I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work. What we're going to do is we're going to change everything to animated player. We're actually going to delete the animated sprite. We no longer need that. All right, and now if we play it. Oh, it does work. Interesting. It plays the idle animation. Interesting. OK. OK, this will be perfect. Now I don't have to change anything. OK, so it does work. Um, but now, oh, let me test the attack. Oh because we need to get rid of this. Let me restart. Play. It'll attack, kind of, but not exactly. And so the reason why we changed this is because we couldn't change the position of the actual slime, because what was happening is it would set it to zero on the world, and it would send it back here, right, to zero, zero on the position. So we don't want that. We want the sprite itself to move dependent on where the slime itself is. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change the position of the slime itself when whenever it's attacking. So the way we would do that is we're going to go to position and the default position we want to set it to here and then as we're attacking so right around there we're going to start moving forward just slightly eight and then 12 key 12 key no, we don't even have to and then right around here is where we'll do right after that we'll do 11 and then back to zero. So now what we should have is a animation that goes in reverse. So the reason why is because I believe we never flipped it, did we? Yeah, I don't think I flipped it, right? Wait, let me double check actually. Yeah, I never flipped it. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, so is there even a flip? I actually don't remember. Okay, there is. Wonderful. Okay, so now I forgot to do this. Um, we want to check if the player is on the right or left. Um, just to make sure the attack animation works, we'll go to the right. And so if I'm right here, it'll kind of attack me. Yeah. And so you can kind of change it to however you want. Um, I can make this 
12 right around here. Um, I can kind of zoom in a little bit. And put it right there. I can also do this. I can look at 1.5 and duplicate this so that it's the same frame for the entire thing. And then it'll slowly go back. So what will happen is it'll attack. So if we actually play it, it's going to go up in the air, land, and then slowly go back to its position. In fact, I'm actually going to duplicate this instead. Yeah, there we go. So now if I relaunch it, play, I'm going to go to the right, attack, attack, and it'll keep attacking just like that. Awesome. And now we want to check if the player is on the right or left. And so the way we can do that is the direction. So I want you to try to figure out uh, if the direction tells us if it's on the right or left. So the way to do that is if we can actually, if we actually just print the direction. So direction, print direction, and play. And so now we can see it prints the direction here, right? So if I'm on the, if I'm on the left, it prints negative. If I'm on the right, it prints po neg uh, positive, sorry. So what we can do is we can check if the direction is positive or negative. So if direction greater than zero, meaning it's positive, um, we simply play the run. And then we do self dot, not self, sorry, guess node. Um, right, I believe. Right, dot flip h equals false. Else, we'll just copy this, delete that line, and say true. All right, and now we can play it. It should flip, or it should just. Ah, okay. So we want the dot x axis. We want to look at the dot x. So now this should flip depending on if I'm on the left or right. So now if it, I'm on this side, uh, interesting. Okay, that's a little bug. We'll fix that next time. Thanks for watching. Um, this video was a bit longer than expected, but that kind of fixes a lot of issues we had, and now we have kind of a, a working AI. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, subscribe. If not, let me know how I can improve. Um, I'll see you guys next time.